Viewmasters, it's the podcast that we do. Viewmasters, talk about movies that we view. Viewmasters, my friend Eric and me, Joe. Viewmasters, hey, let's start the show. Hey, welcome to the Viewmasters, episode 253, I Kill Giants. My name is Eric. My name is Joe. Hello, Joe. Hello, Eric. How's What's it going, sir? What's happening? Uh, it's uh, going quite. It's going fine. All right, because what's happening on my end is you are cutting out. Oh no! Can you can you hear me okay now? I can hear you okay now. Yeah. Okay. All right. I I will uh, I will try and stay closer to the computer. Hopefully, that'll take care of it. Okie doke. Uh, it could be on my end. I don't know. Who knows? You sound yeah. fine to me. Well, great. <laughs> how, how do we sound to you, listeners? Let us know. Sure. Write us in the comments. Please do. Like and subscribe. <laughs> oh, boys. How's it going? Uh, it's, it's going all right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we, we, we had a foster dog for uh, about a... About a week and a half, uh-huh. uh, and he he is no longer with us now. Uh, he has been adopted. He, died? he did not die. Oh, okay. All right, all right. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I know. Man, my tone would have been totally inappropriate for that. <laughs> well, uh, you had some issues with the dog, so <laughs> I mean, they were minor issues. <laughs> he, he he didn't like me at first, but he 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 came to came to I think appreciate me. I think that's how all your friendships are. I think you're right, actually. <laughs> yeah. Start off as enemies, eventually become, you know, sort of begrudging friends. Yeah. I mean, that describes how you and I became friends. It really does, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, but yeah, otherwise otherwise doing all right. How about you? Oh, I'm uh, not having a great time myself. Uh... I, I got off work today and uh, decided I was going to treat myself. I've uh, talked uh, on the podcast before about this uh, chicken sandwich place uh, the nearish where I live. Yes. And I was like, yes, I am going to go get uh, that chicken sandwich today. And um, I went there and, uh, and they're closed. Oh, no. And like just per- permanently? Uh, uh, I mean, I, I did some research, and uh, on their Facebook, it, it says temporarily closed, but, uh, uh, you know, who knows? I, I know that uh, they're they're working on maybe relocating, but uh, but still, this was this was possibly the second saddest I've ever been in my entire life, and just I know what it's like to feel loss. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I think that we all have, you know, that that chicken sandwich place in our lives, right? Uh, you know, for for some of us, it's a it's a literal chicken sandwich place. Mm-hmm. Uh, for others, it's you know a loved one or or uh, a pet or which you know a pet would be a loved one or uh, you know <laughs> so, some Depends other some pet. other thing. <laughs> <laughs> You know, so, some other some other thing that's important to us, and sure, uh, I guess. yeah, no, you, you're you're absolutely right. It's uh, it's tough to lose that chicken sandwich place. So I I it, hope uh, I hope for for your sake and uh, for everyone's sake that uh, that it returns. I I do too. Oh, boy. So <laughs> yeah, it's just uh, I'm gonna be a little bit uh, down this episode, and I, I apologize in advance. That's okay. Yeah, <laughs> that's, just... that's that's quite all right. Well, you, I'm, I'm curious. Me. Well, <laughs> I was going to ask, what was the? You said this is the second second saddest you've ever been in your life. Uh, can I ask you what the first saddest was? No. <laughs> okay, fair enough. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> I just some things need to be personal, you know. I understand. Yeah, some chicken uh, sandwiches are too are too tough to talk about. Yes, they are. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
uh, it's well. I mean, you know, I, I'm glad though that uh, you know, in in the face of that loss, uh, we watched this uh, lighthearted, uplifting movie. <laughs> Oh boy. Um I feel like maybe I should have warned you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm just I'm just going to say uh up top this movie hit me hard. <laughs> <laughs> was not uh, expecting what this movie was. Uh so just out of curiosity, what were you expecting? I was expecting a girl with a big hammer who fights giants. Okay. Which sort of get that. I guess sorta. I I thought I thought it would be more actiony mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. uh or or you know more fantasy. I don't know. Yeah, I I did not expect a uh uh basically straight up drama. <laughs> a a somber um, movie about the loss of innocence in childhood. Yeah, exactly. I, that that I did not expect from this movie. <laughs> Uh, oh so, boy! Uh, it, this movie is uh, based on a comic uh, by uh, creators Joe Kelly and uh, Ken Nimora, I believe his name is. Okay. Um, and uh, I, uh, we actually reviewed this on Gutter Trash years ago. Oh wow! Uh, and uh, I, I loved the comic. Uh. And, um, so I, I will say that, uh, I also don't remember a damn thing about the comic, you know, like <laughs> just, just story beats or, or, you know, events within the book. Uh, because as I was watching the movie, I was like, well, I don't remember this and I don't remember this, but I did remember sort of like the overall tale and, uh, the, uh, the tone of it, I guess, uh, more s- stuck with me than anything else. Gotcha. So I knew going in that, uh, yeah, you, we, we, we're not in for a, a wild, a giant killing ride, as the <laughs> title would imply. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this this was uh, not uh, Jack the Giant Slayer <laughs> for sure. Nope, nope, nope. nope. <laughs> Uh, I will say um, that I really liked this. All right, I thought it was, I thought it was very good. I was not feeling it. Oh no! Okay. Um, and again, you know, I, I said that I loved the comic, or at least I remember loving the comic. But uh, maybe I just wasn't in the mood. Uh, but no, oh, I felt like I struggled through this a lot. Huh. Uh, just I constantly kept pausing it and, and checking to see how much time was left. <laughs> oh, uh, man. That's not a good sign. No. Uh, I, I, but, you know, uh, so, so the movie was adapted by Joe Kelly himself, uh, so I would assume it's faithful to the comic. Uh, you know, and uh, I... <laughs> I actually was planning on uh, listening to the episode of Gutter Trash where Jason and I reviewed the book just to see if, like, anything lined up, if anything that he and I talked about, you know, matched with the movie. Yeah. Uh, but I just I ran out of time today. Uh, but, yeah, I just felt mostly bored and disinterested throughout the movie. Oh, jeez. Jeez. I'm sorry. <laughs> eh, not your fault. Because, uh, again, I I mean, I sort of knew what to expect, so, you know, I wasn't... Uh, I knew I wasn't going to get uh, sucker punched by the, uh, you know, uh, a surprising tone of the movie. Yeah. <laughs> uh, compared to, you know, what you know, someone who has no idea what it's about, uh, you know, would would get when they watch right. it, right? Uh, because the the movie's description on Hulu itself is also very misleading. I mean, not very, but 
uh, it does lean more towards uh, this is a movie about, you know, uh, a girl who kills giants with a giant hammer. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, and judging solely based on the cover image, which I always judge things by their covers. Uh, well, as you that should. Was, you know, that was what I expected. And uh, it was it was not that for most of the no. movie. Nope. Uh, uh, maybe that's uh, the one good thing the comic did because the cover of the comic is just a close up on uh, Barbara's face. Oh yeah, that's that would. That's I mean that's that's pretty vague. Yeah, <laughs> that, that 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 gives you no expectation other than yep. there is a character who looks like this in the comic. Right, <laughs> and, and the, I guess the title, you know, being I right, Giants. yeah, naturally, could could be misleading, could be. <laughs> but is she the giant, or is she the one who kills the giants? Who knows? Ooh, based on that cover, I read and find out. That's right. <laughs> or you know what? I'm I'm going to go back and listen to the episode of Gutter Trash where you guys talked about it. Okay, <laughs> be a nice nice little twofer. Sure, I'm, uh, you know, I, uh, I can't even remember when we did it, uh, or, but I can guarantee it'll probably be terrible. <laughs> Fantastic. Yep. It's the gutter trash way. <laughs> the gutter trash promise. Yeah. Mediocrity at best. <laughs> Continuing with the Viewmasters. Exactly. That's right. All all part of the Gutter Trash Network. Yep. It's my legacy. <laughs> uh, so yeah, uh, sort of basic high level uh, overview. Uh, I Kill Giants is about a, a teenage girl, Barbara, who yep. uh, uh, is or believes she is tasked with protecting her town from giants. Uh-huh. And uh, and she's she's sort of an outcast at school, and uh, she's having some problems at home. Uh, there there's something going on. Like her sister is taking care of her and her brother, uh, and uh, so you know over the course of the movie we uh, we learn more about what the nature of what's happening at home is and uh, the nature of the giants that she's facing. Um, yes. And, and, uh, yeah. It's a big old metaphor. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. Um, and maybe that's why I didn't dig the movie. Yeah. Uh, b- because I, I don't know, maybe. I don't know, maybe it was because I knew what to expect, but, but, I mean. Yeah, gosh, I don't know. It's it's the, this is going to be a hard one for me to review. No, that's fair. Uh, I th- I think yeah, th- there was there was definitely an aspect for me uh, of ch- sort of trying to to suss it out while I was watching it. Like, is this real or is it all just in her head? Um, right. And you know, I I probably I probably should have known pretty early on that it was just you know, metaphorical all in her head spoilers. Um, but you know, I want, I wanted to give her the benefit of the doubt <laughs> that mm-hmm. it could actually be a real thing that was happening. Um, but yeah, so, so I, I had that, that there was a bit more mystery for me probably than there was for you having read the comic. I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, I did at one point, uh, just, you know, pause the movie and try to find the comic. <laughs> okay. Just, to flip through it just just to see how things lined up because i feel like i feel like there were more than just one fight with a giant in the book sure which you know obviously in a comic you know that that is uh, a lot easier to pull off than in a you know movie with live action humans yeah uh you know budgetary and otherwise uh so you know maybe the book you know had a little more of the fantasy stuff interspersed you know with the you know heartbreaking real life stuff that you know anchors the book 
or yeah. the story in general. Uh, whereas the movie, it's mostly just the sadness anchor that is just constantly <laughs> there. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I will say that, you know, uh, d- despite all that, you know, and, and we've talked about this before, you know, if a movie makes you feel things, you know, there, there's got to be something to it. Uh, yeah. And despite my sort of restlessness with the, the movie as a whole, like when the, you know, e- even though I knew it was coming, uh, the the reveal of, you know, what Barbara and her family is actually going through, uh, it still hit me pretty hard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, did, did not make me, uh, feel good. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It'd be, I'd be concerned about you if it had made you feel good. <laughs> You're like, oh yeah, this is my favorite part. <laughs> Uh, you know, I mean, the, the, there is sort of a thing about, you know, like, like you should, you know, not actively root for, for, you know, harm to come to a child, you know, particularly in entertainment. Uh, but I do like remember watching the Babadook and, and turning to my girlfriend at the time and just actively wishing that kid would die. Uh, <laughs> So, you know, I mean, it, it all depends on, you know, what it is you're watching, I guess. But... Sure, okay. <laughs> I, I was not actively rooting for anyone in this movie to die. That's uh, good. Uh, <laughs> but, boy, that, that kid in the Babadook, sure, could he, had, he had it coming. Uh... <laughs> my, my favorite part of the Babadook is when he's complaining to his mom about how hungry he is. And his mom just like turns at him and goes, "If you're so hungry, why don't you eat shit?" That just makes me laugh so much. <laughs> like she got him. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, he should have eaten shit. He deserved. It. <laughs> Uh, speaking of eating <sighs> things, uh, yes. just, uh, Karen is a terrible cook and, uh, <laughs> I don't blame anyone in that house for not wanting to eat anything that she made. What was she making in that first scene that she was I... just squirting ketchup into? <laughs> oh God, I don't know. And I uh, did look to disgusting. Uh, joy, boy, she is terrible. <laughs> She's a real Karen. She's a real Karen. She is literally a Karen. <laughs> yeah, like, I think maybe it was Sloppy Joe's, but it looked terrible. Yeah, uh, I mean, like, I'll have ketchup on a hot dog or a burger, but I will not make ketchup a main ingredient in anything that I cook. No, definitely not. <laughs> Like my mom, my mom uses ketchup in meatloaf, uh, uh-huh. which I think it, which I think is acceptable, because uh, uh, meatloaf is basically like weird burger form. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> at least that's yeah. my understanding of meatloaf. Uh, I mean, essentially, yeah, yeah, you're you're not wrong, <laughs> <laughs> but I think that's the only like cooked dish that that I c- can think of that that has ketchup in it. It's very strange. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess... I, yeah, Sloppy Joe, I guess, does have some in it, but, you know, not just... Yeah, I mean, she just emptied that bottle into that <laughs> skillet. <laughs> uh, Karen, Karen played by uh, an actress with a name that I love to say. Imogen Poots. <laughs> I I don't know. I cannot take uh, seriously uh, any actor whose name is the, the childish word for farting. <laughs> I think that makes me love her even more. <laughs> she had to go through life with the last name Poots. 
Uh, she's an actress. Why? Why wouldn't she change that when she started? Uh, you know, getting roles. Yeah. What if that is her stage name? Oh man. <laughs> what, if her, what if her real name is actually Imogene Farts? It used to be. Yeah, Imogen Farts. <laughs> oh man. Uh, but I thought I thought she she would did a fine job in this. Uh, yeah, I guess. Uh, so, I mean, her her role is relatively minor. Yeah, uh, you know, uh, yeah, I thought she was fine. Um, but but uh, you know, the the weight of the movie is on you know the the actress who plays Barbara, uh, Madison Wolf, I believe her name is. Yes. Uh, and I have no idea how old she is in this movie, but uh, she does an exceptional job. She really does. Yeah, she's very good. Uh, I I did look and I saw that she was also in Trumbo. So, oh, yeah. return, returning Viewmaster. <laughs> <laughs> All of the people who have been in the movies that we've watched are Viewmasters in my mind. I, we are, we like are not that. the Viewmasters. They are the Viewmasters. Yeah, I accept this. I accept this as canon. <laughs> Uh. <laughs> and then we had uh, we had Zoe Saldana as the yeah. guidance, the school guidance counselor. Yep, Mrs. Uh, Mole, I believe. I believe so. Yes. Yeah. And uh, uh, she did a fine job. Yeah, yeah. She uh, again not another huge role, but you know a, a bigger role than you know I think Imogen Poots had. Yeah. Uh, at least more crucial uh, to to the storyline. Uh, she plays. Uh, I, I don't know. Did you already say what she played? Yeah, the, the school guidance counselor. Okay, I was not great. <laughs> she she is a a school guidance counselor who gets way too involved in the lives of her students. Uh, at least the uh, the one, yeah. At least the and, one, yeah. Um. There's the scene where uh, she starts asking Barbara about baseball and, like, holds her hand. Yeah. And Barbara freaks out and slaps her. And uh, I think Barbara had every right. I, You know what? I think you're right as well. <laughs> <laughs> and I, and I, I, I feel like, uh, I feel like. The, the I, I don't remember her, her name. The the guidance counselor. I feel like she agreed as well. Like, oh yeah, all right. <laughs> I pushed a little too hard. <laughs> I deserve uh, that. Still narked on her though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just just it sounded like just to her sister. <laughs> like I'm I'm sure if she had told the principal or whatever that Barbara would have been would have been out of there. Probably. Uh, Barbara is treated horribly in the school, uh, <laughs> in general. Yeah. Uh, just, just, to uh, add on that extra layer of, uh, just how bad you're supposed to feel for her. <laughs> yeah, I mean, she, the, the teachers seem to sort of just have no patience for her. Yep. And, uh, and of course there's the, uh. The, the the bully who who just can't leave her alone. Yep. Uh, and uh, that girl and was a real bitch. <laughs> she really was. Taylor, she, I think the character's name was. Yes, Taylor. Yeah. She was the Everyone worst. Everyone named Taylor is the worst. <laughs> Everyone named Taylor. Wow. Everyone named Taylor. <laughs> Even Taylor Swift. Do you know that's what I meant? <laughs> <laughs> Even Taylor Ducey on Gilmore Girls? I don't no, know who actually, that is. He really is the worst. All right. <laughs> <laughs> now that I think about it. I always uh, thought that they they should do like cuz you know they did the Gilmore Girls reboot. Uh right. and 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 uh I didn't care for it, but uh I thought that they should have done it as a murder mystery. Uh, where uh, someone has to come to town to investigate the murder of Taylor Ducey. Uh, and then in the end, it's revealed that everyone in Stars Hollow conspired to kill him because he was just fucking terrible. 
<laughs> I know this means nothing to you having not seen Gilmore Girls. Nope. Uh, is is he the one that was played by the guy who went on to Supernatural? No. Okay. No, that was that was uh shit, what was his name? It doesn't matter. Okay. <laughs> he he was bad too. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> In retrospect, everyone on Gilmore Girls is kind of the worst. <laughs> <laughs> so, sounds like riveting watching. It, you know what? I loved it at the time. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, we get a rare uh, sighting of uh, Mickey Smith from Doctor Who in the wild oh, yeah. here in this movie. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah, I was uh, surprised uh, pleasantly when when he showed up for you know thirty seconds or whatever. Yeah, I'm I'm always excited to see Mickey the idiot show up in things. <laughs> uh, even in uh, Star Trek Into Darkness, was he in that? I don't remember. Yes, he was. <laughs> Who did he, he was, play in uh, that? He was in uh, the opening of the movie. He he was the one who caused uh, the the uh, uh, explosion uh, that sets off the events. I have zero memory of that movie. <laughs> <laughs> I I'm I'm okay with that. I will take your word for it. All right. The the only thing the only thing that I remember from that movie is in the clouds. <laughs> Which is just wow. a story I've told. <laughs> Which is just a story you've told me. Yeah. I didn't even experience that. <laughs> That's my favorite part of Star Trek Into Darkness. Fuck. <sighs> uh, so, yeah. Uh, I, uh... I... So, as, like I mentioned, I that this movie hit me kind of hard. Yeah, uh, I, I think that uh, you don't you don't realize how how often sick family member is used as a trope in things until you have a sick family member. Yeah, and then uh, and then it becomes very apparent. <laughs> and uh, and you know we we got a sick family member here. That's the that's the not really twist, but the the reveal of what's happening is that uh, Barbara's mother is sick with some uh, unidentified terminal illness. Right. And uh, yeah, so that that just uh, I guess the, the the overall metaphor of you know wanting to be able to defeat that somehow with a big hammer right. or whatever, uh, and sort of coming to terms with with that it uh, yeah that that hit me real hard yeah uh like i said you know uh, even though i i was not particularly enjoying the movie uh when, when uh like when, when barbara is confronted by you know sort of the reality of of what is actually happening to her or to the family uh um, that, that's, yeah, like some of those scenes hit me hard. And then when, when she finally goes to, to see her mom, cause she's basically been avoiding her dying mother for, you know, the, the entirety of, of at least, uh, this movie, yeah. uh, you know, and, and, you know, God knows for, for how long she actually was. Uh, but, but when she finally talks to her mom again uh yeah that that uh that wrecked me yeah Um, yeah it 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 it, it started it started with her uh confronting the titan mm -hmm. uh and then it was just sort of a a steady stream of of (laughs) quiet to loud sobbing through the rest of the movie (laughs) (laughs) uh no, yeah, when when uh, uh, Zoe Saldana tells Barbara, you know, your mother wants to see you, and it's sort of the first, you know, reveal that we get uh, of of what's happening. 
Uh, that's that's pretty much when it hits me. Yeah. Uh, like I think her her friend Sophie Sophia something yes, like that the, the British just, girl. Yeah, I think it's just Sophie. Okay. Uh, when she confronts her at the the gaming store, and uh, when when they mute out to the word mom, uh, like oh, you hello, know, are you still there? Yeah. Sorry. Hello. Yeah, you, you you cut out on me. I can hear you now. Okay, I'm sorry. No, that's okay. <laughs> you you were you were uh, saying uh, when she when Sophia confronts her at the gaming store. Yeah. And uh, the when she flips over the table after you know when when Sophie says you know the word mom and they they sort of mute it out yeah and uh, just like kill all the sound in the movie uh you know i i thought that was a pretty powerful moment you know uh and then that's followed up with with the first giant fight i believe yeah yeah the one at the train yard yes yeah uh, which, yeah, I, I thought you know, I thought that was really I, the the, uh, the muting of the word mother and that whole flipping of the table I thought was really well done. And then yeah, the yeah. action sequence at the train yard was was actually really cool. I thought it was really yeah. nicely done. Um, I mean, you know, as far as like the the action and the CGI goes, it's it's you know, it's muddy, but but it's fine. Yeah, uh, it was like, like CW quality. I thought. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the Titan, you know, sort of, uh, you know, just reminded me of like a transformer made out of rocks, you know, right. Uh, <laughs> just, just a lot of, uh, moving parts in the dark, you know, and he's dark colored, uh, yeah. but, but, uh, uh, it's, but the weird thing is that like when she finally, uh, pulls out Kovaleski, which is her magical hammer. Right. Uh, I thought the hammer looked really fake and weird in her hands. The hammer did look... It looked really awkward. <laughs> the, like, just, <laughs> it didn't feel like it had any weight to it. Right? Uh, <clears throat> for as large a hammer as it was. Uh, and, like, you know, it feels to me like that's a thing they could have made. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? And just enhanced it with CG, but but it looked like it was almost entirely CG. Yeah, I, like she I was got that probably holding well. just like a, a green, you know, pool noodle or something. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been awesome if she just had to fight it with a with a pool noodle. <laughs> I did like, like uh, her last name is Thorson, and she fights with yep. a big hammer. I thought that was cool. Yeah. I enjoyed that as well. Uh, well, you know, uh, yeah, you know, I'm not, I'm not too proud to admit when I'm dumb. Uh, you know, <laughs> like I, I only realized that like at the end of the movie, though. I, d- I don't think that I caught her name at all during the movie. I just, you know, when I when I looked on IMDb at at uh, at her credits and saw the character's full name, that was when it hit me. So I don't know if that makes uh, me. Maybe it makes me dumber than you in uh, this scenario. I'll accept or that. <laughs> at least less attentive. <laughs> uh, like, I think it hit me, like, uh, in the the first back-to-school scene after she, you know, finally, you know, accepts, you know, what has happened to her mother. Uh, and the teacher calls her, like, by her full name. Uh, that's when it occurred to me. Gotcha. So, you know, the so, last yeah, like the last scene. five minutes of the movie here. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I totally missed that. So kudos to you. All right. <laughs> uh, uh, so, yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know that it, that I have a, a ton else to say about it. I thought, uh, you know, I thought most of the performances were pretty solid. Um, yeah. Barbara is very well developed. I thought, you know, maybe I would I would have been interested to see a little bit more of uh, her siblings developed a little bit more. Like we we get an idea of what uh, her older sister is going through, and literally nothing with her brother. Yeah, like uh, he even entirely disappears. I think in the last you know quarter of the movie. Yeah, uh, <laughs> like he's not the last the last scene at the funeral. 
He is like when not it's, there. He is, he's, he's there in a chair, and then he goes off somewhere and leaves the sisters alone. And it was real weird. <laughs> okay. Well, that whole funeral was weird. Nobody was dressed for it. Uh, <laughs> like, everybody's just wearing casual clothes, but, I mean, they're black, but it's still, just, like, sneakers and whatever. Yeah. Uh, that That is disrespectful to the dead. <laughs> I mean, maybe that's just how they do things in Long Island. I don't know. <laughs> I guess. <sighs> so, yeah. Uh, yeah. But, yeah, otherwise, you know, I... I I, I hello yeah okay <laughs> i i heard weird beeping there for a second that was weird all right huh <laughs> no, i'm not sure <laughs> all right <laughs> this episode uh, is plagued with audio problems it clearly is more more so than usual <laughs> <laughs> uh but yeah uh, i you know i i uh I, I liked it. I thought it was well done. I thought it was an interesting story. Um, uh, yeah. So, and, and, you know, I, I come at it again, having not read the comic. So, uh, right. maybe, maybe that's why we had different experiences of it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like, like I said, uh, I, I mean, I don't think this was a poorly made movie. Uh, I think the pacing's a little slow, especially towards the beginning. Uh, but yeah, I just found myself just constantly checking my phone and just disinterested in what was happening. Uh, even though, like, I know the source material as something that I, I truly did enjoy. Uh, but you know, your mileage may vary. Maybe I just was not in the mood for it. Uh, but I do highly recommend the comic. So, you know, check that out at the very least. All right. Yeah, I was thinking I might I might read the comic uh, this weekend, maybe just to see see what because because one of my things I was going to ask you was how it lines up, like how right. how how true to the comic the movie was, but but you don't remember, so I'll just read the comic myself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe I will too. Maybe I'll, I'll dig through my boxes and and see if uh, where it is if it's readily available. Or uh, I'll look on Hoopla and see if it's on there instead. I feel like it might be on Hoopla. I think it's in my queue. All right. So, yeah, well, then, there you go. There we go. All right. I kill giants. Yes. Mixed review. <laughs> uh, uh, do, you have, do you have anything that's, uh, that's bringing you happiness this week? Not a thing. You? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I realized as I asked you that that I I didn't I didn't plan anything either. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Uh, phew, uh, yeah. No, I got nothing, man. All right. Yeah. <laughs> I read uh, I read a graphic novel this week that I enjoyed. Okay. Uh, it's uh, it comes out next week. Uh, it's, uh, so Ibrahim Mus- special. I know. Right. So yeah, I, it comes out next week, but for the listener, it's been out for three weeks now. Uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's, uh, it's Ibrahim Mustafa's new graphic novel. Uh, it's, uh, it's called count. It's a, a sci-fi adaptation of, uh, Alexander Dumas, the count of Monte Cristo. Oh, okay. uh, and uh it's it's pretty pretty entertaining uh i i really like mustafa's art a lot mm-hmm. like it's 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 uh he's got sort of a i feel like just like a clean uh clean straightforward storytelling style um and uh and so yeah this is the the first of a three three book deal that he has with humanoids uh oh, wow. so so it's kind of fun just to see like given given carte blanche to do whatever he chooses to do a sci-fi reimagining of a, a 150 year old novel uh but but yeah it was it was really fun i actually wasn't familiar with the original story at all so it was basically brand new to me 
Um, that's cool. And and yeah, it's 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 very cool. It's worth it's <clears throat> worth reading. And I think I think the humanoids books are 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 ones that come to Hoopla uh, the same week that they're released in stores, or at least pretty close. So oh, nice. uh, you should be you should be able to check that out when it's out. Okay. Uh, yeah, I like uh, I like his artwork. Uh, you know, I've, I've I don't think I've read anything where he's been a regular artist on, but but uh, what I've seen of his work, it's it's solid. It's yeah, it's very. If I'm thinking of the right person, uh, kind of like a uh, Yannick Paquette. Uh, Oliver Coipel type style. Yeah, I can see sort of a mix between those two. Okay. Yeah, he drew. Uh, yeah. He did the 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 only thing that I've read uh, that that he did before this was uh, he did the six issue Mother Panic Gotham AD series for Young Young Animal. Okay, uh, yeah, yeah. that was that was a series that I really liked. Okay. Uh, well, you 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 talked about comics, and that that made me realize that uh, yeah, I do have a, a small joy this this past week. Oh, good. Uh, is that I, I've been doing some comic shopping, and uh, I've just been been filling in some some holes and some runs, and uh, I've now, uh, as of this week, I've uh, finished purchasing every issue of uh, the Power of Shazam series from the nineties. Nice, that's awesome. Uh, that that uh, I found most of the issues. I think. Eh, most of my collection is, uh, you know, at least stuff that I've bought recently is all like, you know, hey, I found most of this in the dollar bin or whatever. Sure. But there's always just like two or three issues that uh, you you just got to pay full price for. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and so I've, uh, you know, that was a series that I've been looking for for a couple of years and uh you know it got to the point where there was like two issues i needed left and uh man they were like you know five and eight dollars and i was like oh, i man. can't find these fucking things anywhere like you know, not even in dollar bins can you find you know any of the issues of power Shazam anymore uh so i just i broke down and then bought the two i needed on ebay oh uh, so so it's it's done now <laughs> Uh, but, which but, one? There which is ones a, were they? Do you remember? Uh, issue twenty and issue forty-five. All right. Uh, twenty was a final night crossover with Superman. Okay. And issue forty-five was, uh, I think, the first part of the final storyline, which uh, guest starred the JLA. Gotcha. Okay. Like uh, Grant Morrison era JLA. Nice. I remember uh, when I was when I was collecting the Starman series that there mm. are a couple issues of Power of Shazam that cross over with that that I had a little bit of trouble finding. Yeah, um, yeah. <clears throat> I, I well, think that's I awesome. actually. Yeah, uh, and then uh, uh, I posted a, a picture on Instagram uh, and, and Twitter this past week. Uh, another book that I have been looking for for twenty nine years. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Uh, what'd you what'd you uh, find there was uh so in 1991 uh you know late 91 92 whatever uh the 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 very first uh dc dark horse crossover was batman versus predator uh drawn by uh andy kubert (laughs) and uh at my very first comic store where i had uh my very first pull list uh i had batman versus predator on my file and uh and shockingly this was not mavericks but they (laughs) fucked up my order (laughs) and uh they never got me an issue two that's awful Uh, and i had gotten issue one and three and the uh this was back when uh you know, sometimes they would put out a comic in both newsstand and a prestige edition. Sure. Uh, and I had the prestige editions for one and three. Uh, and over the years, I have seen issue two, but only the newsstand edition. And uh, 
I got just enough OCD in me that uh, that's just not going to fly. You you are a discerning collector. <laughs> I think that's perfectly reasonable. <laughs> uh, like, uh, so like when when uh, I've talked about the the comic Cobra uh, on yes. here before. Yeah, and uh, when when he first moved uh, to publishing at Image, uh, I was like, okay, well, I'll get the trade. You know, I've been getting the trades up till now. Uh, my first thought though was, ooh, is it going to be the same quality as the old trades though? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but luckily, they just never put one out, so it all worked oh. out. <laughs> all right. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he only published. He didn't publish many issues at Image before he took it back, did he? Uh, just six. Yep, that's what I thought. Yeah, so uh, they're you, still you doing his. There. Yeah, uh, they're still doing his uh, digital distribution, and I guess they will still be putting out the trades. Gotcha. But uh, for single issues, he yeah he is self publishing again. Gotcha. Uh, but yeah, so so uh, I finally just broke down and. Uh, looked on eBay and found a relatively cheap copy of Batman vs. Predator number two, uh, the deluxe edition, and uh, just and, and, and fulfilled uh, a dream. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's excellent. Congratulations uh, on, on completing you, b- completing both of those. I do <laughs> wish you had told me. Uh, that you were looking for Power of Shazam issues because I was at Half Price Books last week, uh, and I think they had a full run of that oh, series. No, well. <laughs> oh, well, it's fine. Next time, <laughs> next yeah, next time I go uh, dollar bin hunting or whatever, I'll uh, I'll shoot you a text and then <laughs> see if you've am, seen anything anywhere. I am always happy to help people hunt for things, so please do. <laughs> Uh, well, you know, I, I sent you one last week uh, that uh, if, if you find anywhere uh, for, for a relatively decent price, I guess, uh, if you can find Astro City number 47, I would be very grateful. Because <laughs> that's I one have, I can't even find on eBay. <laughs> I have not seen any issues of Astro City recently, but yeah, my, my eyes are peeled for for the cute corgi in a superhero costume issue <laughs> i appreciate it <laughs> that is that is the only one of that series that i no longer or that i do not have so gotcha <laughs> i keep waiting for for them to do just like nice deluxe hard covers of that series i would like i know there are i know there are hard covers of it out there but mm-hmm. just like i don't know i just want something that's because you know, the hardcover collections are I don't think they're chronological or like the issues are collected in a weird way that they're not consecutive for some reason. And that weird. just drives me nuts. So I, I just, I really want just, just Kurt Busick, if you're listening, <laughs> please, please, uh, please do deluxe uh, in issue order <laughs> hardcovers of Astro City, or at least some sort of an omnibus would be, would be nice. <laughs> And also, if you're listening, Kurt, if you just happen to have an extra issue, a copy of uh, Astro City number 47, uh, <laughs> please send it my way. I, I will yeah. pay for it, of course. Perfect. And, hey, while we're talking, uh, you know, uh, how about a JLA Avengers uh, set? That'd be great, too. Thanks. <laughs> oh, man, that's a, that's a pricey meatball. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I saw the soft cover for that at Half Price Books, I don't know, like six months ago for like a hundred dollars. Yeah, like that, that seems about right. <laughs> collection of that book is insane. Yep. <laughs> I mean, I'll take the single issues if they're cheaper, but you know. All right. <laughs> well, I'll keep I'll keep my eyes peeled for those as well. Okay, I appreciate it. <laughs> Uh, uh, so I suppose I should pick a movie. If you would like to. Uh, I, I guess I would. Yes, <laughs> okay, I would like to. Great. Excellent. <laughs> uh, I don't know if you've uh, seen this one or not, but uh, I've... Uh, you know what? I'm going to be completely honest. I'm not super excited about this one, but... <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, but I kind of want to see it. 
Interesting. Uh, <clears throat> it's on uh, HBO Max, and it is a David Lynch movie called Mulholland Drive. Oh, all right. Yeah, have you I, uh, seen that one? I have seen that one. Okay. And uh, I won't say any more because I don't want to. I don't want to uh, tinge your opinion of it. But okay. I will be. Right. I will be very interested to see what you think of it. <clears throat> okay. All right. So so you're you're uh, giving that a thumbs up to to go ahead and do then. Always always up to watch a David Lynch movie. <laughs> okay. Excellent. Sometimes I'm, I'm not. I'm, I'm actually surprised that I haven't picked one before now because there <laughs> I, I've seen relatively few David Lynch movies so. <clears throat> As have I, and uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, extra honesty here. Uh, just moments before we started recording, I realized I hadn't picked anything yet. Okay. <laughs> and I was like, you know what? Uh, you know, just going on that line of thinking of, uh, I have not seen a ton of David Lynch movies. Uh, that that would be interesting to do. And so I scoured all the. Uh, you know, streaming services that I know both you and I have, and uh, there are precious few that are available to watch for free. <laughs> yeah, I feel like, uh, I know the straight story is available somewhere, I think. Probably uh, Disney, I would guess. I think it is Disney, yeah. I think that's the only one yeah. that's on Disney, because I haven't seen that one. Um, okay. But yeah, you're right, there's, there's, there's very few that are available to stream. Uh, yeah, I found Mulholland Falls, or Mulholland Drive, Mulholland Falls is a completely different movie. <laughs> uh, oh no, Eraserhead. I watched Mulholland Falls! <laughs> you know, someday it, it is going to happen where we will watch two different movies. <laughs> That's going to be so to. fun. I'm, I'm so excited for that to happen. <laughs> we can't do it on purpose, though. No, it's of course not. Organic. <laughs> I watched the original Con Air from 1945. <laughs> oh, I wish there was an original Con Air. <laughs> I do too. <laughs> how do I how do I will that into existence? <laughs> oh man. Uh, but yeah, so uh, Ball and Drive. If, if you're still okay with that, I I am 100. percent Okay and excited for that. Excellent. All right. Well, then we'll see you next week on The Viewmasters. All right. See you then. Thank you for listening to The Viewmasters. You can subscribe to the show directly at view.guttertrash.net or at iTunes and leave us a review. Visit view.guttertrash.net for email information and links to Facebook and Twitter. We'll see you next time on The Viewmasters. Viewmasters.